Here I am at Target, looking reluctant, and that's the top shelf head metallics racket for $40. It's their nicest tennis racket. Grabbing it, reluctantly, yep, there it is. Putting it in my bag with some watermelon. <laughs> there it is, and we're off. Off to the checkout stands. Oh man, I'm looking around a little bit. Don't want anyone to see me with the watermelon and racket. Well, you guys, I finally did it. I finally bought a Target racket, and I think I picked the nicest one on the shelf there. I really wanted to try this racket because I want to know if you're a total beginner, is $40 a realistic amount of money to spend to get a racket that isn't absolutely garbage? Quick side note, I am planning on making a video about buying your first racket as a beginner. I want to say real quick that I think a couple of things matter and then a lot of things don't matter because you're a beginner, you have no idea what your play style is going to be and a lot of things that make a racket good or not good for you will go completely undetected for a long time. And as you develop yourself as a player, whatever racket you're starting with, you're probably going to outgrow or you'll figure out that you want something that that racket isn't giving you pretty quickly. Or you might just keep growing alongside it for a long time. But I think as a beginner to expect your first racket to last you through a long period of your growth, especially in the beginning stages, mm, I don't think the odds of that are so high. But I think that's especially true if you buy a beginner's racket. So I'll make a video about that in the future. As far as whatever this racket is, I can't really tell you because it's not a standard racket by any means, but I'm gonna find out. At least on the surface, it looks like it has some qualities that make it passable for a real racket. The other ones on the shelf there really don't. So let's talk about why. What makes this racket worth the $40 as opposed to the 20 or the 15? But first, let's put this in my swing weight machine because I gotta know what this bad boy weighs and what its swing weight is. Does anyone have a guess? I have no freaking clue. I'm just gonna play with whatever strings are stock on this thing. I'm not going to put Restring Zero or Toraline Wasabi in this. <laughs> so let's see what the specs of this racket are and then I'll talk a bit about why I picked this one. It's not just because it was the most expensive one, but I do think it's justified in being the most expensive one. I'll talk about that. I'll talk about why. And then I'll actually play with this racket. So I'm going to finish the rest of my errands now, and then I'll come back and probably be on a real camera, or at least not in my car, and we'll keep this video rolling. This crazy, crazy idea. All right, time to get some alphabet soup. That's also <laughs> for a future video. <laughs> It'll all make sense. Don't worry. All right, now that we're back, it's time to unpackage this racket. Head pro players may play with different rackets from the model shown. Hmm. No sh Wow, it even has the head stencil on there. That's fancy. It's a four and three-eighths grip size. What kind of, kind of butt cap is that? Just looks like Sharpied on there, their logo. <laughs> All right, how many throat holes we got? We got six throat holes, okay. These grommets are pretty legit. No parallel drilling, but we got small grommets. That's that's a good sign. Almost looks like the Auxetic logo. <laughs> Metallics, okay. Elite. It's not a tour or a pro model, you guys. It's the Elite model. This throat actually looks pretty legit. That's one of the reasons I got it. The other ones just have like two bars that come together. Very, very cheap design. This is an actual racket beam as opposed to just, I don't know, a completely flat metal bar, which is super harsh. This actually has all the design elements of a real and modern tennis racket, as far as I can tell, on the surface. So, you know, that's better than nothing. All right, we got it in the swing weight machine. You know, <laughs> I didn't even notice, but they have the specs on the side of the racket here. That's pretty legit, right guys? Sorry, it's so shaky. That's kind of legit though. All right, let's measure. I have no idea what it's gonna be. I'll guess like 302. Oh my gosh, that's so low for a strung weight. Most times that's what the unstrung swing weight is. So, wow, this is probably like 250, 260 unstrung, very, very light. I can't even believe I'm gonna measure the twist weight of this racket, but we'll measure the twist weight. I feel like that'll be kind of within normal spec range. Okay, so for a normal racket, this would be somewhere in the high 12s and the low 13s. So let's see. I'm guessing that's what it will be. Okay, high 12s, 12.79. 12.79 is really close to what the Strung Dunlop CX200 Tour, which is a 95 inch racket. Pretty light. 316 swing weight, Strung. 
All right, so these are the basic specs. And honestly, if the racket seems to play pretty well, but it feels kind of light, it's nothing a bit of lead tape probably couldn't do a lot to compensate for. I'm not saying I'm gonna do that, but you know. I'm about to call it a night, but look at this snapback. <laughs> it's actually really good. Even the crosses will snap back. All right. But I guarantee that'll go away within a minute of me hitting. I don't even know what this is. Like, I don't know what material this is. It's probably sin gut, right? Or just some terrible polyester. I have no idea, but I'll find some time to hit with this soon. Wow, it's actually a two piece string job. It's crazy. I would barely string a racket for how much this racket cost and somebody did string it. It's a one piece job. There's only two tie off knots, but they're cut super long. Look at how long that cut is. Oh. Anyway, I'll catch you soon. I need to get up to other stuff, it's late. Hello, we are on our way to the tennis courts. I'll be using this silly head metallics racket from Target for 40 bucks, was it? And yeah, we'll see how it goes. Funny thing to observe about this racket is that it does have somewhat of a thin beam, which I know we associate with having better control than like a thick beam racket. But again, this is a Target racket that's super duper cheap. I don't really know what we can trust about it at all but it is very light. And other than that, there isn't anything on paper that seems totally ridiculous about this racket. And again, the goal is to see if this racket is actually decent. It might be. Rackets and technology has come a long ways that I wouldn't be surprised if you could actually sell and make a half decent racket around the $40 price point. So let's see what we think. I will see you guys on court. All right guys, moment of truth here. That head metallics on the court. <laughs> Oh, I can feel the flex. Oh yeah. The whole thing's just like... Play with the noodles. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, no stability. Oh, that's weird. Hit for like one minute. Yeah, the strings already get kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay, you know what? This feels like, this feels a lot like a wooden racket.
Oh. Alright, let's see how much uh, top spin I can get. Oh, what the heck? Uh, I don't know what that was. Ah. Uh. Yeah, look at the strings. If you guys want real snapback, oh boy. Get restring zero or Toraline wasabi. Links in the description. Last few balls. I gotta put some real tennis, but not bad. More comfortable than I would have thought, actually. All right, guys, let's summarize the experience. Honestly, not bad. I could play decent tennis with this racket, I think. Like I said before, it has all the elements of a real tennis racket. I'll try to pull up a picture here, but the beam shape that I'm talking about here, on some rackets, it's literally just like a flat slice of metal. There is no actual beam. It's just a thin section of metal that I imagine does nothing to absorb any of the shock and also might not provide as much structural stability as something a little thicker might. So it's possible with those rackets you'd actually get more flex. And this racket already is kind of flexy. It sort of blurs the lines between how a wooden and modern racket feel. This is somewhere in between. Some people might actually really appreciate that. I feel like if this racket sold for a hundred dollars more and it was a little bit heavier and maybe the head size was a 100 instead of a 102. It is a 102, right? Yeah. I think quite a lot of people would have nice things to say about it. But the fact that it's $40 and sells at Target kind of justifies the weird specs of like a 102 or this really low weight. How much does this racket weigh or say it weighs? 9.3 ounces. So just on paper, this is a racket that tennis players might not take so seriously. And then the price tag is also something that you wouldn't take very seriously. But there's no reason that this racket couldn't be something you could take a little bit more seriously on paper with a few small adjustments. And then if you just bump the price tag up $100 or so, I really don't think that many people would question the quality of the racket, but people would talk about how this racket has a unique flex profile. I can kind of feel the whole racket bend back. Whereas on a racket like my Pure Aero 98 or most modern rackets actually, the flex seems very concentrated sort of around here, but this racket just honestly does feel like it's bending like a diving board. That's only a slight exaggeration and probably my best attempt at describing how this racket feels and flexes. Oof, what was that? So my point is, is that this really isn't a bad racket at all. And if you wanna spend $40 on a brand new racket, ah, it's hard to go wrong with this. I do think if you wanted to spend like $100, you're much better off buying something like those Babolat Boost rackets, or I think Yonex has those, I forget what they're called, but they have a V-Core and an E-Zone something. And they're made in China and they're much cheaper. They come strong again with some basic sin gut. And a lot of the specs are sort of similar to what this is, but I think those are closer to a nice or real tennis racket, if you will. But for $40, I am actually really impressed. Now, I'm definitely not gonna play my best tennis with this racket, but I think there's a lot of points and a lot of situations and a lot of people who could be on the other side of the net and wouldn't necessarily know that I'm using a $40 racket, but I would know. That being said, Earlier in the video, I said there's a lot of shortcomings that may or may not be true with this racket that probably, to some degree, could be compensated for with lead tape. And I think if you put a little bit on the tip 
and around the three and the nine. And then honestly, you maybe added like 15 grams to the handle or something. You could have a very, very passable tennis racket here with an interesting flex profile. Now, I don't know how a racket like this is going to hold up over time. I'm sure that there are a lot of corners cut when it comes to quality and durability, maybe even on the materials used of the racket. But for $40, this is a very good deal. And if you're just a beginning tennis player, I honestly don't see why this would be any worse than a lot of the rackets out there that are marketed for beginners, which have a big head size, a similar weight, and kind of a head heavy balance. A lot of those are like 150 bucks hmm, for no reason. Maybe they offer better quality, but I don't think that that quality matters because beginners aren't hitting like a truck. So why would the tennis racket quality matter that much if you're not hitting hard enough to exploit that difference? My point is that I love a lot of people buying those 150 plus dollar rackets, like those weird E-Zone light models and stuff. If you're a total beginner, I don't see any reason to steer you in that direction as opposed to this one. This is $40. And I think in some ways I might prefer how this plays or feels to those rackets. And you saw me hitting with this. I can play some real tennis with this thing. So there's no reason that a real beginner couldn't get started and reasonably developed on a racket like this. And that's pretty much all I got to say about that. This is not going to be my next racket and I'm actually probably going to go to Target to return this. And I don't know if I'll be reviewing this anymore. I joked kind of about putting Restring Zero or Wasabi in here. I don't think I'm going to do that. Yeah, look at the, look at the snapback here. So I actually probably didn't play with this racket for more than 10 minutes. And I know this is probably an extra cheap string, but this is exactly what would happen to me on a fresh bed of nice multi-filament or Syngut strings. Just look at this. Yeah, that creak, that creak, that zero snapback. Oh. And honestly, if I played with this for like another hour or so, I think the strings just would have broken. So without further ado, let me tell you real quick about my favorite strings, Restring Zero and Toraline Wasabi. Those two companies make my favorite strings and they have amazing snapback. Remember how this racket was at the beginning of the video? That's how those strings will stay until they break, which is incredible. And when you have that much friction reduced on the string to string contact, you maximize snapback and you get so much durability out of it. So the spin, the durability, the snapback, it's all second to none. And it's interesting because Restring Zero and Toraline Wasabi, in my opinion, are the only worthy strings of being compared to each other. Sometimes people like to bring up like RPM Blast or Hyper G. Those strings don't even come close, especially if you care about snapback. Now, I'm not saying that Restring Zero Tour Line is going to be everybody's favorite string, but I think what is pretty factual to say is that they are absolutely some of the most durable polyester strings to ever hit the market, and they are also absolutely some of the best spin strings to ever hit the market. I would actually say the best. The ball bite is really good, and the snapback is unparalleled. So if you want to try these strings for yourself, I have discount links below in the description. You can get 10% off of Restring Zero and 20% off of anything from Toraline. I don't have a favorite string between the two, but Restring Zero does feel a little bit more crisp and it holds tension better. Wasabi is a little bit softer and it comes in more colors, which is all fun, you know? And Toraline also has a new string called Wasabi X and you can buy Wasabi X in their Wasabi Pro Hybrid. And depending on when you're watching this video, they might be selling Wasabi X as a string you can buy either in a set or a half reel. And that's a really cool string because it's just like wasabi, but instead of having a square profile, it is round. So it is extra, extra snappy, and it is actually a little bit softer. So I really enjoy crossing wasabi X with restring zero, restring zero being the main string. That's a super fun combo. You guys can try that. Or you can use Toraline wasabi in the crosses with restring zero in the mains. Pretty much any variation of those strings is awesome. But if you're using restring zero with Toraline wasabi, I'd always put restring zero in the mains because it is the stiffer and better tension holding string. All right, guys, that's all. This is fun. And I guess say what you guys want, you know, it's the player, not the racket, but the racket still matters. Yes, I can play decent tennis with this racket, but I do absolutely feel somewhat handicapped with this racket, although not nearly as much as you might assume that you would for a $40 racket. Now, if you spent $20 on those target rackets, I do think that that would be actually terrible. That would feel horrible. If you guys want to see me do a video using one of those rackets, you got to let me know in the comments. Let me know if you want to see that. And I will be very soon doing a video comparing Toraline Wasabi to Restring Zero. And I'll talk about that string and its place in the market. And last but not least, if you guys want to support the channel by buying me a coffee, that's essentially a great way to make a donation towards the channel to help me keep making content like this, where I virtually get 100% of the proceeds. And any of the discount links that you guys use below, I do get a commission on. And you get a discount. So, big win-win. All right, thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.